seven years. It's a website about London and everything in it. That's the news, events, uh, the future of London, the history of London, pretty much anything that's of interest to Londoners. But my great passion in life, the thing I like to do more than anything, is exploring the bits of London that most people can't get to. Forget the secret London that you get in the bookshops, the kind of the, the Horniman Museum and the Hunterian and the, all these kind of little John Soames Museum. These things that people tell you are the secret London, the, the guidebooks. They're all wonderful, every one of them, don't get me wrong. But there's other bits of London that are even more interesting, the bits behind the scenes. Some of these things are sewers and uh, the catacombs beneath the city, the bits that people genuinely very rarely go to. Others are more familiar, some of the very famous landmarks have very secret things in them that you wouldn't know about unless somebody told you. So I like to explore these places and I'm going to share a few of them with you tonight. Unlike some of the speakers tonight, I really don't have a message, I don't have any, any kind of point. I'm just here to, it's basically like someone showing you his holiday slides, but a very, very good holiday <laughs> in London, all the stuff I'm really excited about. My first example, right, so a reasonably well-known tourist attraction uh, near London Bridge. It's called the London Tombs or the London Bridge Experience. It's one of these places, a bit like the London Dungeon, where you get all these kind of uh, horror shows with zombies and, and uh, creepy things. Uh, very much for tourists, very few Londoners would go there. But I first became aware of it when on the BBC News, on BBC London, there was some credulous reporter who had been taken down into this uh, catacomb space beneath London Bridge uh, when they were building this attraction. And it's this, this Victorian warehouse, and um, the BBC News report was saying that they'd uncovered this plague pit, this, this pit full of dead bodies from uh, I think it's the 17th century. Lots and lots of skeletons. And from that point onwards, the builders who had been constructing this new attraction were refused to work down there. They were seeing ghosts in every corner. Tools were going missing or flying through the air, and there was a general sense of ghastliness down there. And the BBC report was so credulous and believing and trusting. I thought, this isn't real. This is, they, they're going to open in two or three months' time. They're just trying to build a bit of publicity in the press ahead of, ahead of opening. I'm a bit of a cynic and sceptic like that. Um, so I, I wrote to the Bridge Experience, and I said, uh, well, I, I'd love to come down there, I'd love to spend the night down there. Um, I'm not afraid of no ghosts, but I'm a scientist by background. I've got a rational mind, I'd like to think so. Um, let me in and I'll, I'll, I'll spend the night down there. And um, within seconds, I replied to say, well, we'd be delighted, please come along and uh, spend the night. So I turned up, and I brought three or four friends, because I am a little bit scared of, of ghosts. Um, <laughs> And uh, you, you kind of generally want to have a bit of company if you spend the night in a dank corner of the capital. And it was an amazing venue, it was genuinely quite scary. It's, it's this huge, uh, right beneath London Bridge, catacombs stretching, almost, well, probably larger than this room. It's a very large space. Those of you who've been to the Shunt Vaults uh, at London Bridge Station will get the idea. It's a space very similar to that. And so it's a spooky place at the best of times, but bearing in mind they just excavated this plane pit, etc, etc. Um, it was particularly spooky. So, I wasn't prepared for the fact that they were going to lock us in there all night, and there'd be no security guard, it's just me and some mates, and we're told you can drink what the hell you like, smoke what the hell you like, just have a good time and watch out for the ghosts. <laughs> so what did we find? That's me, after drinking as much as I wanted and smoking whatever I wanted. Now this is, uh, this is one of the animatronic zombies, which uh, they hadn't warned us about. They were also installed down there, because uh, it, it was getting close to opening, they were just installing these things. Um, so that is one of the non-real bodies. Um, but this, is, this gives you an idea of the space, I, mean, I don't know how well you can see that in the back, but uh, cavernous arches and catacombs and things. And also this space hadn't really been used for over a hundred years, it was a kind of Victorian wine cellar and it had just been derelict and left abandoned and apparently nobody was even there until this company bought the space. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting place. Um, and as I say, they, they'd left the bodies there, so this is actual skulls and bones and things from, from the 17th century. Buckets of things. And they were still being excavated, they were falling out of the walls. It was, a, it was an amazing place, a, a necrocopia of, of uh, bones and things. 
So we've been there, and it was, we're sort of drinking, talking, having a laugh, exploring, telling ghost stories, of course. And of course, midnight was approaching. And obviously, the idea, that, the idea of doing a Ouija board came up. That was, you've got to do a Ouija board. And, like, ladies and gentlemen, if there was ever a more auspicious circumstance for contacting the dead, than midnight in a recently abandoned plane pit, a recently discovered plane pit, full of bones, at midnight, where people have, are on record saying they've seen ghosts, and this was it. And I've got to tell you, we saw nothing. It's like, there should be a great punchline to this story, but there wasn't. Um, but it was a, an amazing space, and um, well, you can see for yourself, you, know, you get a chance to see this kind of thing. Um, my second thing that I explored, this, this is a very, very, very few of you might recognise this next one. Very secret Londoners, Piccadilly Circus. Hardly anyone knows about this. Uh, well, obviously it's a big tourist attraction, very well known building, uh, famous all over the world. Here I've managed to tell everybody to get out of shot so I can take a photograph of nobody in it. Um, but you'd be amazed what goes on in some, some sort of buildings that look really familiar and are really familiar. They all have their little stories to tell, and I, I'd like to explore these as well. Piccadilly Circus, um, I was actually invited behind the scenes by uh, McDonald's. I would normally say no to a big corporation trying to invite me in, because they obviously want to be turned on the publicity and press. I'm not really in that business unless they pay me to do it, but if they're going to give me a uh, behind the scenes tour of somewhere like Piccadilly Circus behind the lights, so right up the top there where you don't really get to see, I'll say yes. And this, so, so I went behind the scenes, and there's this amazing old guy who still works there, I think he does anyway. He's been there since the 50s, and you see Piccadilly Circus changed so many times, the introduction of the L LCD displays, and, and all those signs have changed lots of times, and he's got all these great stories to tell. Took me around, showed me around, there's, there's a balcony about halfway up, which you can't really see from the road, but you can hang over the edge. And uh, I don't think it's really see from this, but that's looking down at the pavement. That's me risking my life to look at it. And you can see all the little L LCDs, uh, LEDs, and uh, stacked up, millions of them. And these things generate so much heat, and, and the, the fans that cool it uh, generate so much noise. But you'll never see any pigeon poo on a pigment surface. This is why it's, it's a pristine surface. It's really loud, noisy, hot environment. Keeps the pigeons away. The other thing I learned about Piccadilly Circus, and uh, if there are any hackers in the audience who might be interested in this, um, these signs can be programmed externally, and they're not hard wired from inside the building. Not that I condone it, <laughs> but if anybody here is a bit handy with, with code and stuff like that, you can hack into this, and, well, Coca Cola have got access, and McDonald's got access to be able to uh, reprogram their signs on that. So maybe a fun project for somebody out there. Okay. No talk about Secret London would be complete without mentioning the abandoned tube stations, the ghost stations as they're sometimes called. These, there are about 20, 20 or 30 across London uh, tube stations that for whatever reason closed down, derelict. Um, most of them are very hard to get into. Um, some of you here might have been to Aldwych, which has been open once or twice. Uh, Transport for London have done a couple of open days where they've let people down and look around. Fascinating spaces. Um, there's in fact, there's a guy who's called Ad Ajit Chambers, who I, I commend actually to the organisers of this event as a future speaker, who's trying to get these places open up again and uh, trying to buy or, or at least lease uh, these properties and get people to go down into these amazing vanished spaces and explore, maybe put on corporate events and uh, use them as museums and things like that. Um, he kindly, um, the one tube, or the tube, uh, abandoned tube station that's sort of alright and, and you can get into if you know the right people is Bottom Road. It's not owned by TfL, it's owned by the Ministry of Defence. And as they wouldn't think it, they're more amenable to people coming and looking around their properties than Transport for London are. <laughs> um, so he took me around to Bottom Road. And this is just one still, from, you can find far more photos on, on London if, if you're interested. This is an amazing part of Bottom Road Tube. This is a room down, um, I don't know, two or three stories down. That's a map, you can't really see it very clearly, I don't appreciate it, but it's a map from the Second World War showing all the gun emplacements when they were defending the city from the Luftwaffe. And that's been there since the 40s. And you can look at that map and it still shows you where all the guns were placed. Churchill would have been down there uh, looking at that map and directing people. 
Um, so some of these, these, these old abandoned spaces have got real good stories to tell, real heritage there. And they're just not open to the general public, which is a real shame. My final, uh, so I appreciate my time turning out, my final example, the other thing we have to talk about when we're talking secret London are the buried rivers. Uh, we may have all heard of the River Fleet, and River Westbourne, Walbrook. These are all rivers that were once above ground and once flowed through London. Most of them are now sewers and, and very difficult to get into. Um, there, are, there are groups who break into these places and take really good cameras down there. Some amazing shots. I'm not one of those, I always go through sort of legal channels um, because obviously I wouldn't be able to put them up on my side of the internet if I'd gone through legal means. Um, so I've been into um, a couple of sewers. Um, so this is looking down into the River Fleet. It's, a, it's a, not the best photo, but it gives you an appreciation of how narrow uh, the, the, way, the way down is uh, and how deep these things are. That song, um, for those of you who know the River Fleet, it flows down from Hampstead Heath down to King's Cross. Uh, down Franklin Road, Franklin Street, and out to the Thames. This shot is just underneath Hope and Viaduct, that amazing Victorian bridge structure that crosses what's called the Fleet Valley near, near um, Franklin. So just below Hope and Viaduct, we've got this entrance, attention to the sewers. The thing people always ask me when I say anything down there is, uh, does it smell? And obviously it does, but it's not the first thing that strikes you. Uh, you go down this, this very tight ladder, and you're clutching the rungs of that ladder, which bear in mind that people have been going up and down with loads of shit on their the boots. So you, you're clutching these rails and you're slimy and then your, your face is right up against them. Not the most pleasant thing. But you get down into the sewer and it's kind of up to your, it can be up to your waist, I've been almost sort of nipple in sewage. <laughs> and you don't care about the smell, it's everything you can do to keep up right because you're in these waders that are also up to your nipples. And they're full of air, so you're really buoyant and you're wobbling around like this. And of course there's a current coming against you, the water's flowing, and the, the, the feel of the foot is, is, is interesting to say the least. It's a, a combo of slime and toilet paper and muck, and also very slippery, very boggy. Um, and, all the, and you're also carrying about, I know, 5 or 10 kilos of equipment, because you've got emergency breathing apparatus, you've got emergency alarm, you've got all those sort of gear and the helmet and everything, so you weigh a lot as well. So it's everything you can do to keep the balance. You don't care about the smell, it's you just don't want to end up face down and stuff. Um, really, generally. So uh, the smell does hit you after a while, it's, it's, it's alright, it's, it just smells a bit like, you know that smell when you've left your laundry in the washing machine a bit too long, that kind of mildewy smell, with a kind of undercurrent of poo, that's the sort of the general aroma of the sewer. And uh, it's fascinating down there. These structures are amazing. They were built mostly in Victorian times, and they've got these great arches of brick. And uh, I'll just finish with that last picture, which is me looking not very cool on the ground of the fleet. So um, I'm going to leave it there because I think I've overrun a little bit. Um, but thank you very much. And uh, if you want if you get, want to get in touch, um, anything to do with Weird London, there's my details. I love I love exploring places. So if any of you got access to unusual spaces. Uh, please get in touch with me. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you.